Originating back 4,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia, fragrances were first used as a religious rite. It was thought that it was the only way to communicate because, well, the gods lived in the sky and you couldn't throw things to them. So they tried to communicate by scent. Fragrances were seen as a highly valued commodity and as holy and sacred something that everyone respected. However, today your first experience with fragrances was probably in a middle school gym locker room where you were either axe bombed or if you're like me, someone pretended it was pepper spray and sprayed you in the eyes with it. What's good everybody, my name is Karsten Craning. I make clothes and I talk about clothes on YouTube, but today we're taking a break from that and talking about fragrances and why you're probably doing them wrong. I think fragrances are just as important as clothes. And so this video is for all you guys out there to make sure you're getting the right fragrance and you have the right mindset when it comes to it and that the fragrance you're using actually isn't a detriment to you. And if you're one of the ladies and you're finding this video, welcome. Maybe consider watching this and sharing it, sending it to your boyfriend or another man in your life that you just want to smell better. Today, we're gonna get you all sorted out to make sure that you're not a smelly, stinky mess. Now the first question you need to ask yourself is why? Why do I wear fragrance or cologne? Is it to impress people in general? Is it to impress a lady friend? Is it just to smell better? The question of why is something you need to keep in mind. Why are you doing this? I want you to answer this for yourself and keep it in mind as you're watching the video of why you're wearing a fragrance, because I think it's important. Now I want to kind of identify yourself where you're at in the fragrance journey. Now worst case scenario, you don't have any fragrance or cologne that you ever use. That's okay, because you're not necessarily doing anything wrong, but you're not necessarily doing anything right. And this is just an opportunity to welcome yourself to the journey and get off on the right foot. But for most of you, you probably have some sort of introduction to fragrances. And if my guess is correct, it was probably in middle school through a little aerosol deodorant can. Old Spice Axe, these aerosol deodorants are not actually fragrances, but they're sort of the classic beginner fragrance bestowed among young men as they begin to get very, very sweaty. And these things smell terrible. However, you probably moved past that stage, right? You were probably given a bottle of cologne at some point. One Christmas, you were opening gifts from under the tree and you thought you were gonna get the new Call of Duty or a Lego set, but instead, next thing you know, it's Polo Red. Maybe your first cologne was like Hollister or Nautica. Versace if you're rich. It now just kind of sits on your dresser. Maybe you use it every day. Or maybe it's only a thing for special occasions like a date or a job interview. But either way, at one point in time, that bottle of cologne from grandma is going to run out. Now cologne traditionally is not really like any other product. You can't really buy it as much online because you can't smell things online. So you're probably gonna have to go to your local department store, maybe it's a Nordstrom, a Dillard's, a Macy's, or there's some stores at the mall to go try them out and try to find one. Now no matter where you go, most department stores or malls are gonna have the same selection, which I like to call the usual suspects. The usual suspects of the cologne or fragrance industry for men are a few different brands and their signature scents. There might be a little variation, but 90% of the places you go and 95% of the selection are going to be around the same. Most of them are going to be luxury fashion house colognes. For example, Saint Laurent, Chanel, Prada. These brands are coupled with the branding from luxury fashion houses to kind of make the brand seem more luxurious. Now there are a few brands that aren't coupled with a luxury fashion house that you'll see a lot, for example, Invictus or Creed. But for the most part, the colognes you're gonna see are coupled with a luxury fashion house and co-branded. So how do you go about choosing one of these. Maybe you might listen to a fragrance influencer. Oh uh, baby! Whoa! Wow! It's lavender, fresh, comfort- See, there are a lot of passionate men's fragrance enthusiasts who are out there on the internet and are out there to try to help you on your journey to smell good. And they review a lot of these usual suspects that I talked about before. Great! Power Aventus. Fumes de Mali Paris. But let's really be honest. Do you want to take advice from these guys? Not to say that not all of them are good, or that they aren't good people, or that they aren't making entertaining content. But yeah, I don't think most of you guys want to smell like a coked out European F boy. Fuck. And let me let you guys on on a little secret about these fragrance review guys. Most of the fragrances that they review 
smell pretty much the same. And that also goes for most of the colognes or fragrances that you're gonna find in these big department stores or malls. They're really all from a very small select palette. They all usually either smell vaguely fruity with way too much citrus, or generally aquatic, or they have a vanilla tobacco combination. And don't get me wrong, there are some good fragrances that you can find at your local store. For example, I know Mason Margiela in the fireplace, really good. On top of all these sort of usual suspects pretty much smelling the same or having one of the same few formulas, most girls don't really like the smell of them. Now this is subjective of course, and this is just from my own personal research and experience. Men's fragrances compared to like women's fragrances are much more pungent and intense. One time a girl I knew described most men's cologne as just being car air fresheners that are just so pungent that they burn your nostrils. It's not really pleasant, it's just really strong and overwhelming and sharp and generally fruity. Let's just be real, no girl wants to be rizzed up by a super stinky elf bar. One thing you'll notice if you ever go to a perfume counter or look to go get cologne is that the women's selection is a lot more broad. And that also means it's usually more refined and the scents are a little bit more complex. Pretty much what all these luxury cologne manufacturers decided to do is they said, let's just lower the bar for men because capitalism. So pretty much most of these places are giving you a very limited, intense scent that most girls don't actually like that much. The next part of this video is a story from a very long time ago. So I'm gonna animate it so you know it's from a long time ago. When I was 16, I went on a study abroad to Europe, mainly Italy. And at the time I was into like cool clothes and dressing nice, but I wasn't super into fragrances. But I was in Europe studying art. And I also wanted to go to some of the cool clothing stores out in Europe. I loved brands like Rick Owens, Undercover, CDG, and I couldn't really see these clothes in Minnesota because there were no stores that just carried it. So it was just really cool to see this stuff in person, even if I didn't necessarily want to buy anything. So towards the end of the trip, I heard that there was a CDG store in the city that we were in at the time. So I made plans to go, and I had a friend who was a girl who agreed to go with me at the time, so I didn't have to go venture into the city alone at 16. And we weren't like romantically involved or anything. She was just like a cool friend, but I like really valued her opinion. But anyway, we get to the CDG store. And if you don't know anything about CDG, they have some crazy clothes that are like really, really maximalist and out there, but also really expensive. So I couldn't really ball out, but I maybe had enough for a t-shirt and some of the colognes or fragrances that they had there. Cause those are both a little bit more of a reasonable price. I had saved my money over the trip and I thought this was like the right time to buy a souvenir. So I went over to test out the fragrances. And if you don't know anything about CDG fragrances, it's just like their clothes, they're really out there and different, but in a really good way. Like they just didn't smell like anything I had ever smelled before. And me and this girl are smelling these and we're just kind of baffled and amazed because they don't smell like anything we've ever smelled. And she was like, holy shit, this is literally some of the best stuff I have ever smelled. And I like them, but at the same time, I'm kind of apprehensive because they're so different. I'm thinking back to how I know all the fragrances that people wear normally all kind of smell the same and I think, oh, this is cool, but it's so different from anything that our culture portrays as a normal fragrance. So I found one fragrance called Amazing Green, which is their most generic smelling fragrance CDG carries. It kind of smells vaguely fruity, like the ones that you get from a department store. Well, I kind of tell the girl, yeah, I think I'm gonna buy this one. And she's like, no, 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 don't do that. That one's so boring, get a different one. And I'm like, nah, I'm gonna get this one. And so I bought the most generic and boring fragrance that CDG had and a t-shirt. And as we're leaving the store, my friend goes, you are a fucking idiot. Those are some of the most interesting, unique and cool smells out there and you just went with the most generic one. Why would you do that? She was right. And as time went on, I realized I really liked the other smells better and the one I got wasn't that interesting. 
A few takeaways from this story. First, people really like unique scents. I eventually got some other CDG scents later, and holy shit, people really like them. Most people really haven't ever smelled a cologne or a fragrance like the CDG fragrances like ever in their life. And so when I wear a CDG fragrance, literally there have been countless times where I've been on the street and someone I have no clue who they are literally just stops me and is like, what are you wearing? That smells so good. Having a unique scent is actually a huge advantage to you as well. When you meet someone who has a good unique smell, it actually sends super powerful messages in your brain that associate that person with good and good smelling. And it makes people think of you more and think of you in a better light. So don't be like me and be afraid to stand out. With a scent that's unique, nine out of 10 times, it's going to work in your advantage. Now, the second thing I want you to take away from the story is there's a whole world of scents beyond the usual suspects of like luxury houses that you can find at your local mall. Remember those notes we talked about that most of the luxury scents hit on? Generally fruity citrusy, aquatic, and vanilla tobacco. There are way more notes to use. For example, black pepper, myrrh, agarwood, cedar, amber, hinoki, there are just so many different notes and there are hundreds of them. And there are hundreds of combinations that can be made with all those different ingredients or notes. And they'll literally blow your mind. I have this one CDG fragrance and it's called Concrete. And I guess it's supposed to smell like concrete, but it, it really doesn't. I have no idea what it smelled like and I've owned it for two years, but it just smells so good. and it blows people's minds and it blows my mind because you haven't smelled anything like it, but it just smells so good. Our palettes are so limited by mainstream scents that are in fragrances or body washes or deodorants that when we have some of these really unique combinations that hit our nose, they just blow your mind and they send crazy powerful brainwaves to you that you just haven't smelled before. And while I got my introduction into unique and higher quality fragrances through CDG, there are tons of brands. Some brands that more and more people are using today that are much higher quality and have more unique scents are Aesop, Margiela, and Le Labo. And while these brands are awesome and are a great introduction into more unique scents, they don't even scratch the surface. There are companies like La Foil Un Plaisir, Pine Word, DS Durga, Curium Green, Neanderthal, Kerosene, Papillon, Mandita Rosa, Deezer, and of course, the most gay kept brand of them all, Slumber House. And besides these more smaller independent fragrance brands, not only just smelling better, they're generally just a lot cooler. Like for example, Diaz Durga has Mississippi Medicine, which is a fragrance based off of a proto Mississippian death cult from the 1200s. Or Filippo Sorcinelli has fragrances based off of Silence of the Lambs and the Notre Dame Fire. La Foyle Un Pleasure has fragrances based off of Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. Curium Green has a fragrance based off of Slow Dive. Kerosene has a fragrance based off of Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division. Like this is just way more cooler to me, honestly. Like, I'm sorry, I don't want a fragrance from one of these luxury houses that is like Eros or Guilty or something like that when I can smell like a fucking shoegaze album or copper or something like that. That's just way more fucking badass. And the good news is it's actually pretty easy to try all of these. So instead of the traditional way where you have to go to a department store to actually go physically try them yourself at a place, with the internet, you can just order samples of these. And they're usually pretty cheap between like two to $5 a piece. And so you can order like 15 of these fragrances that you do research and you think sound cool or would smell cool. And that way you can invest like a little bit of money to find one that you really, really resonate with before investing a lot of money in it. At this point, there's really no reason that you should be buying from these weird luxury houses because you smell like an elf bar and girls don't really like it. The only people who do really like it are these really strange, weird, coked out European men. And there's just a lot more better smelling stuff that is way cooler. But okay, let's go back to the idea of why do you want to wear a fragrance? If you said you wanted to impress other people, that's okay. But I think the reason you should be wearing a fragrance is to impress yourself first and foremost. You should find something that you resonate with as a person and that you enjoy whenever you wear it. There's so many amazing combinations out there that you're bound to find one that you really enjoy 
and that not only make you a more confident person when you wear it, but a more happy person because you just enjoy wearing it. Like there are scents out there that are designed to smell like a forest or a bank robber or a Joy Division song, whatever it is. But you should be doing it for you at the end of the day and expressing yourself is an important part of the human condition. And denying self-expression is no way to live. The right way to wear a fragrance is to find something that is just as unique and interesting to you as it is for others. So the right way to find a good fragrance is to find something unique that you enjoy. That's pretty much it for the video. I hope this inspires you to go find a fragrance that you really resonate with. I left a few of my favorite brands down in the description, but I encourage you guys to find all of your own brands yourself and do some research to find something that really resonates with you. Please click like and subscribe. And if you're looking for some new clothes, go check out my clothing brand. It's on Instagram, Karsten Craning. And with that, have a great day and thank you for watching.